Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're just going to take a minute or so as we let everybody get in the webinar and we will get started shortly. Thanks for being here. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to get started in just a moment. Good morning, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. My name is Mrs. Edwards. I'm the career counselor at Atlee High School. We are so glad that you all have joined us this morning for our second day of virtual college boot camp. And we are very fortunate to have with us Natalie Lug, the Associate Director of Admissions with Randolph Macon College. And we're really excited with everything that Natalie's going to bring today to talk about the college admissions essay. Um, so very important topic for the college application process, and we're fortunate to have Ms. Lug with us this morning. Um, before we get started, I do just want to mention the chat is open. So as Ms. Lug is speaking, feel free to add any questions that you might have into the chat. And of course, at the end of her presentation today as well, we'll leave a time open for questions there too. So thank you again for joining us on our second day of boot camp. And Ms. Lug, I'm gonna hand it over to you to get us started. Thank you so much for being with us. Awesome, thank you so much, Mrs. Edwards. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Natalie. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, for those of you um, that rely on pronouns and um, wanna know a little bit more about that, but I'm here to talk about the college admissions essay. and the significance behind writing that essay when you're all working on um, your college applications, as I'm sure some of you have already actually started that process. Um, so where does it start? We, we like to say in our office here at Randolph-Macon, uh, it starts with attitude, it starts with personality, but um, what, what does that even mean? Where, what do you mean when you say attitude? I know some people might think attitude and they think sassy. Um, maybe that's your personality and that is A-OK -okay too. We'd love to definitely learn a little bit more about um, your characteristics, not just from the classes that you've taken on your transcripts, not just from the letters of recommendation of the folks that you've reached out to to write a little bit more about who you are um, on the leadership side of things, the classroom side of things, any other perspective that we can learn more about. Um, for us, it starts with opportunity, but it also could tie in with different obstacles that you've dealt with. So for us, um, we really want to make sure that you're honing in on what could be an obstacle, but turning it around to be that actual opportunity of what you could write about. Um, so an obstacle could, I know for many of you who are athletes, could mean a sports injury. Um, you might hear from admissions counselors that we don't want you to talk about sports because we read about it a lot. Um, but I actually disagree with that because for a lot of you, athletics, um, your work with music, your work with art, your work with community service, all of those are opportunities that have really shaped who you are today as you prepare to step into that college world. So if it's an obstacle that you've dealt with that has really shaped your life and has really been a big part of your life, we want to make sure that you could spin that into an opportunity. Um, that you could write more about, whether it's um, a negative opportunity that has turned into a positive or maybe a negative opportunity that has resulted in more negative things, but you've learned a lot from that lesson. Um, there's so many things that you could pick up on um, from different obstacles that you've overcome. Yes, on the athletic side, maybe in the family, um, maybe in the classroom, we really wanna make sure that you can expand upon that. Um, whatever that may be. I pick athletes because I was an athlete myself, but I do want to share that um, 
it's your choice in terms of what you want to write about. Essentially, at the very end of the day, um, you are writing about yourself and you're telling us a little bit more about yourself in greater detail. You are given that opportunity, per se, um, to expand upon who you are as an individual beyond what we see on the transcript, beyond what we see um, from your list of extracurriculars or the letters of rec that I mentioned earlier, letters of recommendation. Um, it is your choice. And I know I mentioned, like I said, athlete. I was an athlete, but I didn't write about athletics. Um, my dad actually encouraged me to write about something completely different. So I wrote about my wisdom teeth. Um, I don't remember what I said about my wisdom teeth, but that was the opportunity that I took and turned it into something um, that got me into the college that I wanted to go into. Um, now, what is the purpose of an essay when you are filling out your application? There are so many pieces that go into your college application um, that are of great importance. And it's for us on the liberal arts side of things at Randolph-Macon, um, the purpose of your application comes into play in so many different ways, not just for admission, but also for scholarship opportunities. So um, yes, it's to evaluate your writing skills, all of the work that you've done in the past years, not just in high school, but also in middle school, in elementary school, when you first started learning to write. Um, we want to make sure that we see your skill set from this essay and that you can bring those skills and actually improve upon them in your four years here at college as well. But the next thing is also something that I mentioned, I think, um, in the previous slide, we want to learn more about who you are as an individual, that personality, those obstacles that you've overcome, those opportunities that you've had, the characteristics that make who you are today. Um, that's what the essay is also essentially about. Um, you get the opportunity here to tell us a little bit more about yourself than what we see in the classes that you've taken. Um, than what we see in the hours you might have put down for that community service opportunity or your involvement um, with the you know, religion that you're really tied into, anything of that sort. Um, the purpose of the essay, uh, yes, holds a lot of weight, but I think it also opens that door, opens that opportunity for you um, to show yourself off, to show us your skill sets, whether you're a strong writer or not. Um, I think the essay can come can come off as sometimes the most important piece of your application too, depending, yes, maybe depending on the college, but in my mind, I think the essay holds the most weight. Um, and then looking at transcripts and such and the different classes that you've taken to help you prepare, prepare better for the college level. Um, now, some of you might already be struggling on this piece, the choosing a topic. Uh, if you're filling out the common application, I believe there's five or six topics that you can choose from. And one of those, um, I believe is letting you free write and write about whatever you like. You might be asked to write a poem or an obstacle that you've over, had to overcome, um, anything of that sort. So it all starts, I think, with choosing that topic and also setting the tone, setting that attitude um, to find the different obstacles and opportunities you want to write about. Um, I think the number one piece in starting your essay is making sure that you are answering the prompt. So whatever topic you pick, whatever question you pick in your, your application, um, start out with what is the answer to that essay topic? What is the answer to that prompt? Um, and how are you going to expand upon that answer throughout the essay that you are writing? Yes, be specific. When we say be specific, give us examples if you can, if it's relevant to that prompt. Um, be specific in terms of any other additional details that you think might be helpful in writing that essay and answering that prompt, but also make sure on the right-hand side of your screen, you see the triangle that says, don't be modest. The essay is your time to shine and really start to brag about yourself and tell us all the amazing things about who you are. And those amazing things might be, yes, strengths, but they also might be weaknesses that you want to continue to improve upon at the college level. You come to college because we, you want to better yourself on the academic side of things, but you also want to better yourself as an individual and finding out who you are and what you want in a career um, and what you want in a major, maybe to start with that, a double major, a minor, what have you. Um, but essentially it, it is you being yourself and letting us know who you are, what that self is, um, and how can you get that across in the essay topic that you have chosen. So um, these are the four main key factors that I recommend that you focus on. Answering the prompt, number one, um, yes, being specific in the examples that you give in that topic and that prompt, 
making sure that you are bragging about yourself. So many students come in and meet with me and they're very shy and they don't know what to say or they don't want to share that they won awards um, or that they started a club. It doesn't even have to be that specific. Um, maybe there's other ways that you feel are that bring pride to you and what you've done in the high school realm um, or middle school realm or elementary school realm or even outside of the school setting. Uh, we want to hear about that. And then also be yourself comes along with that. Um, sharing a little bit more about who you are so that we can get to know you better beyond the other pieces that we see on your application. Now, starting out with the writing process. Obviously, it's not just practicing your letters like this student is doing here. I know you're a little bit beyond that process and you've learned a lot more about what it means to write. Um, but I always recommend starting out with preparing to write that essay, to write that prompt with organizing your thoughts. So it, it, it again, circles back to answering that prompt. Um, maybe it starts with those bullet points. Maybe it starts with just one word and adding onto those a huge list of words of how you want to start out that essay to get the gears flowing and going in your brain to really figure out what else do I want to say in this essay? How do I want to portray myself? Um, so organizing your thoughts before you even start writing paragraphs, before you even start writing that essay is number one. Now, consider your purpose. I think that can, get, yes, go back to answering the prompt, but also it can go back to what all do you want to share about yourself? What is the prompt that you chose? And can you highlight different pieces of who you are as an individual, different pieces of your family, different pieces of your favorite things, anything of that sort? Um, Going back to answering the prompts yet again, what do you want to convey, convey in your essay? Um, what are the important parts that you feel are necessary to write down and put down in that essay, whatever that prompt may be that you've chosen? So organize your thoughts, consider your purpose, but then deciding to write the topic about what you feel comfortable with. Um, I know we get a lot of suggestions. We get a lot of prompting from other individuals, whether it's from classmates, whether it's from teachers or parents, um, it can be stressful. It is great to have that guidance, but we do also wanna make sure that you are the one writing that essay and it's coming from your own personality, your own individuality. Um, also don't write what you think we want to hear. Again, going back to the different topics that we see that are very common. Yes, uh, sports is a pretty common topic. Um, an injury, overcoming that obstacle is very common, but that doesn't mean that it's not insignificant in your life, even if we have read it a lot in other people's essays. If it's a huge part of your development and what you've done throughout your years, please write about it, especially if that's something that you want to write about and is something that you're comfortable writing about. Um, again, choose something that you want to tell us about, not that not what we want to hear, if that makes sense. And lastly, be creative. Um, the leaving room for flexibility. I know there's a word limit on that essay topic that you're going to be writing. Um, you don't have to write all the way up until that last word. Some people will write a very short essay and still get to the point of that prompt and convey what they wanted to share in that essay prompt. Some will go all the way up to that last word count. Um, it's up to you, I guess, in your writing style and how many drafts you write, but make sure that you are allowing yourself the opportunity to, to be creative in that essay. Um, but with the flexibility piece, it's okay to be a little bit shorter in that essay or to be right up to that word count, whatever that may be. Um, I definitely don't know it off the top of my head because it's been a while since I've written my own college essay. Um, now, actually writing the essay, um, I know we mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, but write something that you know a great deal about is key uh, in terms of writing an essay that you feel will actually truly tell us about yourself. I think this has been a common theme throughout this presentation. Um, write something that you know about that also is something that you want to write about. Um, I think that can portray a lot about what we're reading in your essay and really learning about who you are as an individual. Um, adding on to that, I think it is of the utmost importance, not only to write multiple drafts, but also have it reviewed multiple times, not just by yourself, 
because after you've seen those words so many times over and over and over, the words start blending together and you don't even know what, what you're reading at the end. So make sure that you're reaching out to others who are strong writers, whether it's an English teacher, whether it's a parent, whether it's a friend, um, and asking them to review. I think some of the most common mistakes that we see on college essays is that there is a typo, or if someone is writing to a specific college, say Randolph-Macon, um, but they've also applied to Virginia Tech and they accidentally put Virginia Tech in that essay, um, that is a big red flag to us because you clearly haven't put the attention to detail that we'd like to see in that essay for either those typos or incorrect words or anything of the sort. Um, so make sure that with writing the multiple drafts, you are having reviewed multiple times before you hit submit in that application. Reading loud is also super helpful. It not only helps with oral communication and public speaking, but even if it's in your bathroom and you're looking in the mirror and you're reading to yourself or in your bedroom, wherever there's a mirror and maybe you need to be alone to do that, um, you'll, I think, be amazed at some of the glitches you might find in your essay. Um, that some sentences might not flow as well as other sentences, or maybe there's run on sentences that you have found and you might need to um, separate those sentences out. Or maybe you'll realize that you actually can separate the paragraph into two different paragraphs because it adds a little bit more essence to the essay, um, makes it more clean, more organized, and it just works better and flows better. So another piece to think about when you're writing the essay. And one final piece too to that, I think, again, this is also a common theme. Reach out, ask for help when people, when you need help reviewing, when you need help for someone to check the grammatical errors that might be in there, if the essay is good enough. Um, I feel like a lot of your teachers hopefully already will reach out and offer the help that you need, um, or maybe that you didn't realize that you need. Um, but asking for help is key in helping you find what those grammatical errors are, are if the essay is uh, good enough on your end to submit it and put it down in there. And I say good enough, have it be great enough, have it be the best essay that you've ever written to submit to the college of your choice, or the colleges of your choice um, to get you into where you want to go, wherever that may be. Um, I think this is a little bit of a repeat using the proper grammar, spelling, and sentence structure. That circles back to writing the multiple drafts and reviewing multiple times so that you catch those errors and so that you do find the right flow. Again, I think the most common theme is that someone has not reviewed their essay enough so that there are grammatical errors, or again, they accidentally put the wrong college in. It happens, I'd say, at least three times every single year in the essays that I read. Um, so pay attention. <laughs> um, finally, make sure that you are writing in your own voice. Again, writing what you want to write about, not what other people want to hear. Um, write about something that you know that you can expand upon greatly, whatever that may be. Now, I wanna give you all a minute to read this first example. And if you wanna type in the chat, any issues that you might see or anything that you liked, um, I'm gonna read it out loud for everybody to practice what we wrote on the board just the slide before. Reading aloud can be very, very helpful and you might realize some mistakes that you'll hear, um, grammar errors, or maybe things that you like. So. Example one, I like to play soccer a lot. I am a good student, always ready for anything that my teachers give me. I will like to play for a college and make something out of it. I will be willing to study at this university and play the sport I live. I am a senior at Wakefield High School and love to play soccer, but the thing I think about the most is school. I'm always staying on track and try my best to not fall behind. And when I have the time, I'll go practice the sport that I love the most, which is soccer. Like I said, I don't like to fall behind because school means so much to me and I always want to keep myself ahead of everyone else so I won't have any trouble studying in college and playing in college that my main goal and right now I'm going to graduate and pass everything that I need to get this over with and move on to a bigger level. Woo! I'll make the best out of myself. Like I said, I will be the best of the best on the field and off the field. I know that it's going to take some work, but I'm willing to take the opportunity. I don't see anything in the chat yet, but I wanna let you know there were so many run-ons. Someone mentioned that there's no indentation at the beginning. Correct, there's no indentation. That, that is a, a minor piece that is something that we notice about. Punctuation is huge. It is incredibly repetitive and inconsistent, that is correct. A lot, a lot of run-on sentences. 
typos. Again, repetitive, run on sentences. You all are crushing it. Too simple. Oh, that's a good one. Very disjointed. Oh, I like that too. Um, you all are noticing every single thing that I noticed while reading it, missing proper vocabulary. Um, so many incorrect words, uh, misspellings, anything of the sort. I swear it was, there were maybe three sentences in that whole example, it felt like. Um, because there were so many run on sentences. I think this could have very easily been split into three different paragraphs, um, saying what this student loved about the sport and why they loved it and why they think it would be necessary to continue at the collegiate level. Um, yeah, I think this would actually have been a red flag for uh, reviewing at Randolph-Macon College because we wanna make sure that you're going to be able to write well here and that you can hold yourself up in that writing process. Um, a few other pieces that are coming in from folks, certain vocabulary feels like the writer is loathing writing his essay. I completely agree. I love that comment. Um, a few things were mentioned too many times. Yes, again, incredibly repetitive, seemed informal at times. It definitely did. Um, Essays can come off informal and that's okay, but it still needs to be written well, um, even if it is a little bit more on the casual end. And I still think there's a way that you can write an informal essay, but still have it have proper punctuation. Um, so I, I think this example was pretty glaring at what not to do. Um, the importance of making sure that people are reviewing your essay, that you're looking for any issues with it in terms of flow, in terms of grammar, punctuation, anything of the sort. Reading out loud can help because, again, it can determine how to break up the essay if it's too clumped together. Um, I can't believe how many grammatical errors were in this essay and that the student didn't actually catch, pick, pick up on that and, and fix that. I know we have the red squiggly line that can come up under Microsoft Word. Um, I know a lot of emails, Outlook, Microsoft Outlook that I use will correct my words while I'm typing, which is super nice. Um, but sometimes your computer won't catch anything or won't catch everything, everything, pardon me. So that's why it's important to get other people to maybe take a look at it as well. Um, thank you everybody for your input. That was incredible. You picked up on pretty much everything that I picked up on as well. Um, here at Randolph-Macon, we rank essays um, zero, one, or two, I would probably have marked this as zero, that there wasn't any effort in this essay. Um, so maybe it's a little harsh, but you got to be able to write in college and be able to hold your own in writing those papers that you're writing. So um, on to the next example. I'm going to read this one out loud as well, but feel free to start typing in the chat anything that you notice that might be good, bad, ugly, anything of the sort. So example two, I love Lindy Hop. Lindy Hop is a form of swing dance that rose to popularity in the late 1920s and is still in practice around the world today. I began taking swing classes in August of 2015. The Lindy Hop experience has been a valuable part of my high school journey. Weekly classes and social dances have provided me with an outlet for stress relief, exercise, and promoted my creativity and confidence. Lindy Hop is unique in that the strong partner connection between the lead and the follow is complemented by each dancer's creative styling and, and improvisation. It took me a while to reach the point of, com of comfortably incorporating spontaneity in my dancing because I was so, so focused on trying to follow the lead. The very last thing I wanted to do was be the one who messed up. This perfectionist mentality limited my progress. After an, an, an abundance of encouragement from instructors and dance partners, I began experimenting with stylistic variations of the basic steps during a social dance. That was when it clicked. I was so excited. I was beginning to understand what the instructors meant when they said to feel the music. It was hard to overcome the fear of embarrassment in order to put my creative self out there on the dance floor, but it happened. I am passionate about Lindy Hop because it stretches me and gives me joy. The Lindy Hop community is inclusive, friendly, and encouraging. I plan to continue swing dancing for as long as I can. Okay, a little bit better. The commas are non-existent. I, I agree random question marks where they shouldn't be. Mm-hmm heavily inconsistent with rotating between dancing and Lindy Hop referencing. Yeah, oh yeah. Let's see what else we got. Some of the sentences are not needed, too consistent on the dancing piece. It's informative, but it needs to be separated into multiple paragraphs so that it may be better organized. 
There's no indentation on this one either, but there are some grammatical errors and the structure seems less polished than I would think. I agree. We started out with exa the, this example and I was expecting to be a little bit cleaner and it was to a certain extent, but again, I prefer when an essay is not clumped together. Um, I learned way back when that you need to have a beginning, a middle and an end, and they all needed to be separated into three different paragraphs. Um, I know some of my friends learned to have five different paragraphs in an essay um, to clean it up even more. Again, punctuation goes a long way. Um, organization goes a long way, like we mentioned earlier. I agree that it felt a little bit jumping around with what the student did with the dance, but also the history of Lindy Hop as well. So I felt like it could have been a little bit more organized that way. Um, I would have ranked this a one uh, from a zero to two, a zero one two here at Randolph Macon that they put effort into it definitely, but um, it still wasn't quite the best of the best in my eyes since there were a few grammatical errors, the weird question marks, um, the sentence structure, uh, anything of that sort. But you all, I mean, you all are right there in my head. You're saying the exact same things that I'm reading. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, the last comment that was made, I don't know what they're trying to apply for, but they should branch out and say more things about themselves. I completely agree. And this is a pretty common example. Some students will take the prompt that they have and they run with the topic of it, but they don't give us any meat in terms of how does it tie back to them and their interests. Um, I love it when a student might write about, say, the solar system, and because the essay topic is revolving around something that is important, that has impacted the world today, and they feel like the solar system is a big part of that, but they tie that to why they have an interest in the solar system, whether it's because they want to go on and study astronomy and work at NASA and the space station. Um, I think there are so many great ways that you can sprinkle in pieces about yourself even if it has more of a fact focus in the actual essay prompt itself. So um, I think you all, again, hit, hit this essay right in the nose, same with the other one with the different issues um, and things that could be improved upon and worked on. So hopefully this kind of also gave you all a better idea of how you can better organize your thoughts, how you can better assist your students as they continue to write their essays um, moving forward. I wanted to take a moment and also see if anyone had any specific questions, not just about the examples that we went over, um, but about anything else that was brought up before we dove into those examples. Thank you again, though, for typing your comments in the comment section. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I think you all could be admissions counselors, so feel free to come over to Randolph Macon and help us over here when we start reading applications. <laughs> Ah, so one question that came in, uh, formality is a fine line. I agree. Do you have any red or green flags that you've seen on past essays about this? Um, oof. I think, oof, this, oh man, that's hard. Um, I'll give you an example of one. So one essay prompt a few years ago was about a, a student's favorite place. And one student chose to write about the bathroom um, and that the toilet was their favorite place because it was their favorite place to sit down and actually have time to think um, and have that quiet space. Some people would think that there was too far and very much an informal essay because of the topic, but because of how they spun it, they didn't use any profanities in the essay. They didn't mention anything about bowel movements. Um, so I, I think that they took it to that fine line of the bathroom is definitely a quirky spot to choose, but they had very respectful reasonings behind why they chose the bathroom. Um, so I think, I think it's more along the lines of green flag is it's formal and respectful, but you're still able to tell us a little bit more about your personality, even if it is a little bit quirky. The red, red flag side of things, um, I think some people with the humor that they use in their essays, they can go a little bit too far, whether it's um, because they're making fun of something or someone and they word it in an informal way. I think where that's, that's where it can 
become more of that red flag as well. But I think for the most part, students are doing a very great job, um, a fantastic job, especially as these years have gone on in my seven years that I've been here to keep it formal without going too far with it, if that makes sense. So I, I think teachers are doing a phenomenal job in giving them that guidance um, and making sure that they are staying within those boundaries. Um, what is it when you go bowling? You have those safety features up when you go bowling. So I think the teachers are doing a great job keeping them in those safety lines. Um, next question here. I was once told that admissions officers like some humor in the essays that they read. Is that true? hundred um, percent. If you can give me humor and if you can make me laugh while reading your application, I will remember you. I think there are certain ways that you can be memorable in your application and especially your essay. It doesn't have to just be about humor. Um, there are definitely some that also pull at my heartstrings. I know a lot of students these days are dealing with anxiety uh, and they go into more depth about their anxiety or other issues. Or I know um, this is a sad topic and I hate that we are so close into, in terms of diving into so many people and especially students dealing with this, but suicide. And that goes back to anxiety and mental health. Um, some students will even go for that to that end of the spectrum. Um, and that's just diving deeper into their personality and the ways that they've heard. Um, but that's not a red flag. It's more of a, how can we better support you then with the mental health pieces that you might be going through or the, the different issues and obstacles that you've overcome. So um, humor is great because it tells us more about you other issues that you might have had because it also tells us more about you and it gives us an idea of how else we can better support you um, when you're here in your four years as well. So I, I think both, both ends of the spectrum. Um, you've mentioned so many great things on what we should do for our essays to make some great. Do you have any more suggestions or advice for someone who's a junior who's going to start writing essays very soon? Oh, that is a great question. Um, honestly, I think if you're a junior in high school or even a sophomore in high school, start thinking about things that you wanna write about, about yourself. What are things that are important to you? Um, I, I didn't get that piece of advice when I started. And when my senior year came and I had to pick an essay topic, I was floundering a little bit in what I wanted to write about. So I think something that could be helpful to you all is start thinking about what you think you would want to share with colleges about yourself. Um, and heck, you could start writing a list of ideas that could be helpful that you could circle back to come your senior year when you're ready to apply. Um, I believe in English class, you might be practicing writing essays in your junior year. Um, I know however many years ago, that's what I did. Um, but with the essays, even if you aren't writing specific essays for the college essay process, your junior or senior year, I think with the essays that you do write, pretend that that is your college essay and treat it as such. Um, because you never know, you might end up enjoying that essay and that will then answer a prompt in the college application process. And you just might need to clean it up um, and tweak it a little bit so that it does portray you uh, in, in that present tense when you've, after you've written it after a year ago or what have you. Um, next question, is it a bad idea to write about friends who have taken their own lives due to mental health issues and how they've impacted me to follow my dreams, become a nurse and help people? I don't think so. so. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Um, I love that idea. I think in my mind, you are, um, I guess, helping keep that friend's memory intact. And Well, not memory intact, the, the memory of who they are intact. And I think you're doing them um, something that they would be proud of if you wrote about them. But if you're uncomfortable writing about that, I don't know if you wanna ask that family if they would be okay you writing about that topic. You can also leave it very vague as well. You do not need to put any names or anything like that. Um, you could mention someone that I was very close with. I, you, don't, you don't even need to say that they were a friend. You can just mention that they impacted your life. So you could keep it vague enough that um, you're not dishonoring anyone or you're not being inappropriate about talking about them too much, if that makes sense. So I hope that helps. Next question. I was told once that admissions officers, colleges like quirky people as to be memorable. For example, a college essay website gave examples of essays of people that were accepted into Yale. One essay was someone who would only drink sparkling water. What is the line tried on memorable rather than weird? Um, that is a great question. 
I, I don't know if there is a line, honestly, because I think everybody has their own definition of what weird is, and it could be completely different from the next person. So I think it goes back to then writing about what you think is important and what you want to tell us about yourself. Maybe to someone else that would be weird, but to you, it's a passion or it's a um, quirky thing that you have to do every day, like line up your toothbrush exactly as as it is every day because it makes you feel like you're going to have a great day. Um, I I don't think if you don't, I, I mean, weird isn't bad either. I don't, it, some people see weird and it's great. Some people might see weird and it's not great, but um, I think you can do your own interpretation of that and portray it in a, an appropriate way in your college essay as well. Next question. How far back in life do colleges like to hear about? Are achievements in middle school too far back in life to talk about in essays? Can you go farther back? Is that too far in the past? What would you suggest? I think there's no such thing as too far back if it's made a great impact on your life. Um, some people feel that in high school, they haven't done anything great, that it's just been average. And maybe they're looking forward to college to get out of that average spin. Um, but they've had amazing experiences, even in elementary school. I don't think there's anything wrong. If you can remember that far back, that's amazing. That says a lot about your memory and you're going to do great in college. Um, but if it was a big part of your life and a big part of your memory still today, I say, go ahead and write about it because we would love to hear about it. So does your essay have to relate to what you want to study? It does not. Um, like I said, I wrote about wisdom teeth and I studied economics and now I'm in higher education. So very, very different pathways um, in all different aspects of my life. Um, I wish to go into the health science field, but I want to base my essay off of a backpacking trip I took. Do you think that would be okay? I do think that would be okay. Um, when it comes to, if you end up wanting to go into medical school, they will, I believe, ask you more specifically, why do you want to be in medical school? Um, for our PA program, our physician's assistant program here at Randolph-Macon, um, they do ask you the why of choosing that pathway. And some people, um, for example, will only talk about their experience in CrossFit, uh, but they won't tie it back to why they're interested in the health field. I think because this is undergraduate, it's okay to talk more about your backpacking trip than about your interest in going into the pre-health field because you're going to be diving more deeper into that in your four years in undergrad and then farther so in medical school if that's the pathway you choose. But right now, your college essay is about telling us a little bit more about your current and past self as opposed to your future self, unless your future self is a really big deal and where you want to go and what you want to do, if that makes sense. Great questions, everyone. Would it be too weird to mention things about animals in your essay because you're trying to become a veterinarian? I don't think that's weird at all. I actually don't put that under the category of weird. Um, I would categorize as it making sense uh, because that's the pathway that you want. Um, if you wanna write about your love of animals, I say go for it, expand upon why you wanna become a veterinarian. Um, we love hearing about what you want to do, because again, going back to that support, not just about support with your mental health or anything of that sort, but also your academic support and your career support. So if you're writing more about what you want to do in your future, um, we do also take that into account and in how we can introduce you to professors who help students go into the veterinary field or anything like that, or connect with our pre-med advisor, anything of that sort. Um, so I say, go ahead and write about it. Definitely. Other questions? They've been trickling in. And they've been great. I love it. Thank you all for asking questions too. Thank you, Ms. Lug. These questions have been amazing. Um, wow, it's just so impressive. Students, thank you so much for your participation today. It just made this experience in this, this session so much more for everyone because of that. So we really appreciate it. And Ms. Lug, just the way that you explain things, great information, um, awesome examples, that was really helpful. Um, so thank you just in making it really easy to understand for all of us. So thank you for that and for your time to do this with us today. We really appreciate it.
Oh, you're welcome. It was so fun to do and everybody had great questions. So thank you also to the crowd for interacting with me. I really appreciated that. All right, everyone. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Um, we want to remind you that tomorrow we have our virtual session again at 10 a.m. And this is going to be on financial aid, scholarships, and money-saving tips for college with our GRASP advisor um, from Atlee High School tomorrow, Miss Wood, but she's also going to share information that all of our GRASP advisors um, are aware of and will share with you this school year as well. So please, if you can, be here. If not, that's okay. We're recording all of these sessions. We'll be sending them out either that later that afternoon or the next day. Um, so stay tuned for that and for more resources to come out this afternoon as well. Ms. Lug, again, a big thank you to you and to Randolph Macon College for being here with us today. Thank you to all of our career counselors that are also here with us, Ms. Corbin, Ms. Crowder, Ms. Bolander from all of our high schools. And we will see you all tomorrow at 10 if you can be there. Thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.